Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time you're watching this. My name's Connor from 905 Review. You guys are checking out our series Give This a Spin, where I recommend you some of my favorite albums. Today we're looking at Modern Rock Legends Radiohead and their 2007 release, In Rainbows. Radiohead became one of the biggest rock groups of the 90s off the success of their breakthrough single Creep, coming at the tail end of the grunge era. Now, they didn't follow into Britpop like some of their homeland contemporaries did, instead sticking to just bass alternative rock, though they would reach outside the box and delve into art rock a bit more, namely on 1997's OK Computer, and even more in subsequent albums going into the 2000s. By 2007, Radiohead had already put out six albums and were one of the most successful rock groups of their time, so it was really just a matter of where they would take their sound from here. In Rainbows would treat us to some lovely evening serenades and the occasional rock tune. So why don't we check it out? The album opens off with the jubilant track, 15 Step. It's got these fun, upbeat electronic drums to keep the rhythm, paving the way for the beautiful melodies to come in, as well as the snippets of children cheering. <laughs> It's logical to start off with the most fun track on the album, but don't be fooled because this is Radiohead we're talking about, so these will be few and far in between. And even for as fun as it sounds, lyrically it details the anxiety of fearing that you're not progressing in life, our inevitable death, and as one annotation on the lyrics website Genius put it, the title could even be a reference to public hangings. This then takes us to the rocking body snatchers, starting off with an absolutely raunchy guitar tone that I just love. The production and sound all throughout this one is awesome. It's been reported frontman Tom York's influence for the song was somebody essentially living a false life, being untrue to themselves, and playing a character, which um, I could easily see him using as a narrative for just wanting to be himself, but feeling like maybe he has to be something else, act a certain way as this big rock star celebrity that he's supposed to be. Huge fan of this track, though. We then get much more somber on the third song, Nude. And I was surprised to find the song was actually roughly 10 years old at this point. Originally written to be on OK Computer, worked on again for both Kid A and Hail to the Thief, the band could just never seemingly get it right. They finally did here and despite its very soft and soothing nature, it's a song essentially telling you, you'll never be complete. And for as depressing as that is, the song truly is nothing short of beautiful. God, man, this, this one just absolutely hits. We then bring the pace back up a bit with Weird Fishes, Arpeggi, maybe even arpeggi I. An arpeggio is when you play the notes of a chord all individually, as we will hear throughout the duration of the song. So instead of being like a boah, 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 we hear a doo-doo-doo, 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 doo-doo-doo. So whatever the plural pronunciation of arpeggio, be it arpeggi or arpeggi I, I guess that's what the title is. Hmm. As for the weird fishes, I think Tom drowns himself to get away from the world where he is then eaten by worms and weird fishes. Another gorgeous track, despite hearing a man sinking 
drowning and sharing his final thoughts with some sea life. And closing out the first side of our album, another stunning tune, All I Need. I feel this one so much. The laid back drums, the heart stabbing synths, the pure love and devotion in the lyrics. I mean, I've definitely used this to help get over a breakup in the past. And I feel it's a great choice for that as it's on someone longing for someone else who doesn't reciprocate the feeling. I'm still Opening the second side of the album is the acoustic Faust Arp, and I've got to say guys, what are we doing here? The album was so top notch all the way up to here. I mean, this is hands down, no contest, the weakest song on here. The lush strings on this are really all this track has going for it. This is very much overshadowed by the clanging cymbals and drums that come on to announce the start of the song Reckoner. This then develops into a beautiful little tune where York again showcases his high-pitched singing as he previously had on Nude. The bridge where everything simmers down aside from some in-your-face strings that manage to sound smooth at the same time is probably the highlight of the song for me, though the outro is pretty great as well. Kicking back more now is the eighth track, House of Cards. It's pretty smooth, and I love the production here. It seems like two people are trying to forget about their pasts, or their presents even, in order to get intimate together. And the outro is really what sells this one for me. This then takes us to Jigsaw falling into place, where a quick paced acoustic guitar picks up the tempo one last time on the album. And here Tom is just reflecting on drunken nights out with the lads. Just as you take my hand, just as you write my number down, just as the drinks arrive, just as they play your favorite song. While this isn't precisely displayed in the lyrics, I like to think of these drunken nights out where surely some poor decisions were probably made. Um, were all the jigsaw falling into place to make each individual band member who they now are today. And reaching our album's end, we close off with the piano-based videotape. This is one for the good days And I have it all here And we're It's such a beautifully tender song. I mean... The line, you are my center when I spin away, oh, that's incredible. Almost brings a tear to the eye. And the coolest part to this is after Tom spins away out of control, they incorporate uh, a drum loop that sounds like a tape reel spinning out. And while this is going on, he keeps repeating the line on videotape over and over as if he's stuck in the loop too. Honestly, I wasn't as drawn into the song as I am now. What really captivated my attention with it is that video that Vox put out on the syncopated drum rhythm going on in it. Strong recommend if you're into uh, music theory. Interestingly, the original release of In Rainbows didn't actually have an album cover. Huh? 
Consider this was their first ever self-released album, so it should come as no surprise they tried to do something artistic with it. By 2007, music had largely fallen out of popularity on TV, and many radio stations had their own pre-programmed playlist, so the band instead decided to utilize the fast-growing internet. So there was no cover, because at first, the album was only available by digital file, which if you think about it, don't really need artwork for. It definitely helps, but this was also way back in the day when listening to music generally, or listening to music on the computer, generally instead of looking at the artwork, you had, you know, whatever kind of bizarre light show going on. And the album was put out for the fair price of zero dollars. Technically. Instead of telling you how much this music was worth, Radiohead wanted you to tell them how much you valued it. So they put it as a pay whatever you want system for the album. So very bold to say the least, but at the same time, they knew the album couldn't be strictly digital because they determined 80% of their fans still bought music in physical form. And so they put it out on CDs and vinyls with this very intriguing artwork. It almost looks like a spontaneous volcano eruption, but in space, which it was actually just made by their album artist Stanley Donwood, who was just messing around with acids and wax. A neat touch is that one line of text on the cover was altered for Japanese releases of the album, which would also either come with a DVD of their From the Basement performance, or In Rainbow's Disc 2, which was just bonus songs that didn't make the cut. Neither of these are exactly essential, but strongly recommend for big Radiohead fans. Um, the From the Basement performance, just to visually see everything that goes into creating these songs, and Disc 2 just for more Radiohead. They also put out a limited edition disc box of the album on two 12-inch 45 RPM records, also with two CDs, the original album, and Disc 2. It also had different artwork, I don't know if I said that. So going back to their pay-what-you-want approach, um, they were the first major music act to do this, and people were actually pretty divided on it. Some people praised them for the charitable approach, if you would call it that, and furthermore, others for cutting out the middleman that is record executives, which kind of paved the way for sites like Bandcamp to just allow artists to put their product right out there. Those who were against it were mainly other artists. Kim Gordon of Sonic Youth praised them for it, but at the same time addressed only a band as big as Radiohead would be able to get away with this without going broke. Um, similarly, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, he was also for it, but then found that when they did eventually put out the physical copies with like a standard set price, that the band was copping out and it was all just a facade. No matter the format though, the music within the album is what counts, and everybody loved how bright and lush and warm and yet also bittersweet the album was. It went on to be featured on many best of 2007 lists, best of the 2000s as a decade list, even some best albums of all time lists. In Rainbows has beautiful sound and production all throughout, and for as crisp as it is a lot of the times, I think my favorite part is actually the crunchiness of the guitar and the bass at a lot of moments on here. I'm so glad Tom York really utilized his high pitch singing on here. I read one of the main reasons that Nude was shelved during the OK Computer sessions was as that time they were still closer towards rock and he felt uncomfortable, emasculated even, singing at such a high pitch, right? But I'm, I'm real glad that he found his way back to it here because it just makes for maybe the most intimate album in their discography. They get an interesting mix going here. A generally lighthearted sound, however, subjects that can be heavy on the heart and on the mind. Um, really, I've got no choice but to stamp in rainbows with an A grading. I mean, it's probably the easiest A grading I've given out, and really, probably close to an A+, plus, if not for Faust Arp. Um, if even that had been replaced with one of the best songs off disc two, such as Bangers and Mash is probably my personal favorite. I'm, 
I might have actually considered giving this thing an A plus grading, though I know my girlfriend would have preferred up on the ladder instead. I'm stuck in the tides, trapped in space. Those have been my thoughts on Radiohead's In Rainbows. Let me know yours. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. It means a whole lot to me, and I love having you around. You take care of yourself. Enjoy the rest of your day. But, real quick, as always, before we take off, you gotta let me know what you thought of this album. Did I rate In Rainbows too high? Did I rate it too low? You let me know down below, and uh, maybe stick around a while, check out another video. Till next time, pal.